Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what are the symptoms of sedative, hypnotic, or anxiolytic withdrawal? So to start with, it's important to understand that this is a mental health diagnosis in the DSM, in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. So this is a separate diagnosis. It's fairly common when working with drug and alcohol treatment to see sedative, hypnotic, or anxiolytic withdrawal. And specifically, we see this a lot with benzodiazepines. So let's take a look at the criteria. The first criterion is stopping or reducing a qualifying substance, meaning a substance that's a sedative, hypnotic, or anxiolytic. Again, most of the time, this would be a benzodiazepine. And then we have eight symptom criteria. So the next criterion is two or more of the eight symptom criteria would be met. The first one is autonomic hyperactivity. So this would be an increase in blood pressure, increase in respiratory rate, increase in heart rate, sweating. The next criterion is hand tremor. Then we have insomnia, so difficulty sleeping. Nausea, sometimes this nausea is accompanied by vomiting. Next symptom is transient hallucinations or illusions. Then we have psychomotor agitation, anxiety, and the last symptom criterion is a grand mal seizure. The next criterion is it needs to cause clinically significant distress. So the, the withdrawal symptoms need to cause clinically significant distress. The last criterion is that the withdrawal symptoms can't be better explained from the withdrawal from another substance or from a medical condition or another mental health disorder. Now it's important to note with sedative hypnotic and anxiolytic withdrawal that it's a serious mental health disorder. It can result in death. So it's important to, again, be attentive and to include someone medically qualified when working with somebody who's withdrawing from sedatives, hypnotics, or anxiolytics. Now again, we usually think of this disorder in terms of benzodiazepines, but any type of withdrawal in this category, and any type of withdrawal in any category actually, can of course be dangerous. When we're looking at benzodiazepines specifically, usually we see certain benzodiazepines overrepresented in terms of the presentations of this withdrawal. So four common benzodiazepines we tend to see would be lorazepam, diazepam, clonazepam, and alprazolam. So lorazepam is also known as Ativan, diazepam, Valium, clonazepam, clonopin, and alprazolam, Xanax. Now, with these benzodiazepines, there is a different half-life for each one. And the longer the half-life, we see this potential where the withdrawal symptoms could come on later. So there have been cases where the withdrawal symptoms don't start for a week or more. Now, sometimes, especially with the shorter half-lives, the withdrawal symptoms can start within a few hours. So there's a bit of variation depending on which benzodiazepine someone is withdrawing from. Another interesting point with sedative hypnotic and anxiolytic withdrawal is that the benzodiazepines could have been originally prescribed to alleviate symptoms. And oftentimes those symptoms are related to anxiety. As I mentioned, anxiety is one of the symptom criteria. So what becomes difficult with this withdrawal is that we don't know if it's the withdrawal that's causing the anxiety or the return of the symptoms from the anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder. Whichever anxiety disorder it is, those symptoms could be coming back because the medication is no longer having an effect. So determining if somebody is having the withdrawal symptoms, particularly anxiety, or the symptoms of the original disorder are returning, that's very difficult. It's very difficult to figure out what's actually happening during benzodiazepine withdrawal. Now, of course, if somebody starts taking benzodiazepines again and the symptoms go away, that could indicate that it's withdrawal or the benzodiazepines could be treating, again, that original anxiety disorder. So it doesn't necessarily give us a lot of clarity in terms of what's actually going on. So particularly with benzodiazepines and anxiety, 
making this diagnosis can be difficult. I hope you found this description of sedative, hypnotic, or anxiolytic withdrawal to be interesting. Thanks for watching.